Welcome back YouTube. So today we have our push A session uh, to show you and go through with you guys. So I've already done pretty much most of my sessions now. So you'll have seen both my leg days, one of my pull days. Meg is actually filming her pull day tomorrow as well. So you are gonna get to see all my programming and Meg's programming in detail, session by session. So you are gonna get to see a full list of sessions today uh, in the description and obviously Aaron, who is behind the camera today, uh, will list out the sets and what we are currently doing. So for me, I'm still gonna run 80% of my training volume, which is again, just slightly under to what we'll actually do when I reach my, what I like to call maximum effective volume. Uh, shout out to RP guys. Uh, they actually come up with all these fancy terms, which are pretty cool and I do like them. Um, so before I let my begin and uh, give us a little bit of an update, please subscribe if you're not already doing so. Like the video, comment below, share a bit of love. Uh, there's a lot of people watching the videos, a lot of views, but not many people actually engaging and not that many people actually subscribing. So if you're not a subscriber, please do so. Um, it helps us grow the channel and obviously the channel, the more the channel grows, the more we can share, share with you guys and give back to you guys as well. Uh, also another tip, these actually have no sound on. Don't tell anyone, by the way. <laughs> Don't but tell anyone. I actually put these on, like, completely muted. Uh, not because there are just listen to music, but I do put music on sometimes. But generally, I just like to be in a bit of silence at the moment when I'm on the train. Um, I just, I found myself being able to focus a lot more with no like, external sound. So I normally pop these on with nothing on. And then when I've got these on, people actually do tend to leave me alone a little bit more as well. So whilst the train, I get left alone a little bit and then, you know, I deal with what I need to deal with before or after the train. So it definitely makes, uh, makes it nice. And uh, I like always, I appreciate people. Now, only from me, five weeks post show, uh, push it phase has begun. So very excited. And uh, I'll let make you a little bit of an update. So I'm five weeks post show. This will be only my second time doing this session because obviously I got a little bit poorly. Um, but no, I'm feeling good. I, we, I checked in today, was feeling back to my normal self, visually and kind of physically. So that's obviously a, a real positive. I've definitely been poorly for a lot longer than what I'd been letting myself onto, I think. So definitely feeling much better for feeling a bit more recovered. Um, my push-up, <laughs> if that's what you want to call it, won't start until December, because <laughs> I'm a woman. <laughs> yeah, but you're already in a, a bit of a... You're already in a, in a gaining phase because... I'm not bothered, we, I like we've this. <laughs> we've made sure it comes really quickly, so... Like, she is pretty much back in the game four to five weeks after the show, and like, I know now, every bit of body weight that we gain now, we're going to be gaining more muscle than we are body fat. Uh, that's the way it rolls with Meg, so... She's, uh, I feel like she's probably only just getting her health markers back in, you know, check. She did have a bloodstone done at hospital, which was great. Five times. Five times, yeah. <laughs> and they came back, they all came back dandy. Well, I just had my blood work done with Dave as well, and it came back really good. The so. hormones were okay. Yeah. The, the, the infection rate was a little yeah, bit high. The infection rate was high, but <laughs> is what it is. So I think we're both in a very good spot, both mentally and physically. Uh, shout out to Bear Grips as well. Send me obviously new D handles for today, uh, which I'm going to try. So, okay. right.
set. Next set's work set. So, three warm-ups on here. Why? First movement, I like to take a little bit a few more. Well, first movement, I do like to take a few more warm-up sets. So, generally what I tend to do is just take my time and do my working set when I'm ready. What you always don't notice as well, on isolation work, I tend to take higher rep sets for my warm-ups. So it comes to combat work, more reserves. Good set, well done. Turn your arm in line with the cable. So at the moment you're like this. Two plates please, yeah. Game time on Fox. Let's go. Drag up. Okay, come on. Through, come on. Well, today I'm actually going to take you for an example of how I actually warm up to my top working set on my pressing. I feel like a lot of people either rush the presses or don't save for the warm-up. So you've got two ends of spectrum where I believe you need to have a good balance of both, where you take enough warm-up sets to get you to your top working set safely, but without accumulating any fatigue, so you are fresh for your working set. So let me take you step by step on how I actually approach this and show you all my working sets, all my warm-up sets and my working set. Warm up. The way I approach the number of sets and how many reps I do is based off how I feel. First working set is always going to be in high rep ranges. Then, as I increment a bit, build up the weight towards the top working set, the reps actually get lesser and lesser. What you'll see is the tempo, form, rep execution is performed exactly the same way as I will in my top working set. So, your warm up set is what I call a rehearsal towards your working set. Whenever you get into your presses, keys to get the right posture. You don't want to be like this. You need to actually get a little bit of depression and traction in your scalp and some thoracic spine extension. So a lot of people struggle with ability around the thoracic, which is your upper back. Your upper back needs to be slightly extended to a degree in order for your pecs to actually lengthen and be able to do the work that's supposed to be actually engaging during any press. If you're pressing like this, it's just going to be front down. You need to take that posture and correct arm path, which is going to be more in line with your pec. This is more in line with your pec. This is in line with your delt and clavicle to a degree. Also, this arm path will shorten your range of motion and put a lot more stress on your shoulder joint. You want to take the right arm path that aligns in line with your pec musculature to actually bias the pec across any pressing pattern or fly movement.
What I might do is push free for one rep for a single, just to get used to it. And then I'll base my working self that. Sternum is this here. Lift it up. Being a five or being a seven and a half. What do you do last time? Three plates for nine. Just do a, a three and a five. Five, yeah. yeah. Let's go. Temper there. Come on. Drive. Good. Eight. Eight. I think if I had one more, I would have been deaf. Huh? Almost went for one more. Almost. <laughs> Better. Good. Stand them up. That's it. <laughs> yes. You're fucking right, you're fucking right. Beautiful, fuck yes. Now we're fucking talking. Call tight, drive it up, come on. That's the rip, there you go. There we go, it's nice. Four, yes! Yeah, 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 every week like that. Rep by rep, that's how progression should look like. Rep by rep. If you see any more of a significant progression, form slipping. The main thing is, three of us now, is making sure that we keep each other accountable with the form, with range of motion, tempo, it has to be fucking accurate. Alongside of the progression with log progressions. And ma massive progressions. No, small progressions. This is what I said to her, what shall I go up? Because I feel good. She went, just go for a five. And I'm glad I did because I still got my eight reps. Now, next week, I'll take three and a five again. I'll hit nine or 10. Week after that, I'll go three and a half. Week after that, Maybe add a two and a half to a three and a half. All of a sudden, mate, 10 weeks from here, I'm doing four plates for reps. How do you think everything look when I'm doing four plates for reps? Yeah, no, no, four plates in about, I'd say probably like 12 weeks from here. 12 weeks of progression. So food for thought, guys, write that down. How to progress effectively and safely. Generally, after our first exercise when we are pressing, that is the only exercise where I take extra warm-up sets. Thereafter that, I will only need maybe one, what I call a primer set, or potentially two, just to get me ready for the lift. So as you could have seen here, I literally did two reps on 75% of the load I'm going to use for working set. Now the reason why I know I'm ready for this, it's my fourth week using this machine, so I'm very comfortable in it. It's a machine I've used before, 
and it's a machine I connect with very, very well. So for me, I do not need to waste energy and time doing extra unnecessary sets because I'm already prepared and ready from the previous movements that I've done. And I've already did, did I've already done one feeler set, one feeder set that has got me prepped and ready from a working set. So the most valuable piece of advice I can give you guys, take your form sets to be safe, but do not waste time and energy doing sets that are sub-maximal sets that are not contributing to your progress. What are you working? You working next? Yeah, but I don't need to go yet. Shall I work first then? Yep. Very nice, let's go. Come on. Very nice, let's go. Eight and a half, I fucking tell you that. Let's go. I'm so glad I made the trip over to my At times I almost felt like exploring and first good. Let's go. Call tight. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, nice. Oh. Yeah, boy. So this is Jim Leco standing press. Now, we use this as our tricep compound movement. So what you'll notice is the difference between our chest press dominant presses, our chest, but never really like that. So the biggest difference you'll notice between a movement that is provided to chest versus a tricep is the arm pass. So here, our elbows are tucked almost directly by our rib cage. So as you get to the stretch, there's a lot more tension placed in your tricep and in essence you're forcing your tricep, tricep to do a nice stretch. So as far as compound work goes, your arm path will largely dictate what muscle you're trying to bias when it comes to pressing patterns. Uh, so again, as a reference point, nice and tucked tricep, heck, there's a big difference. And again, you don't want to be out here ever across any pressing pattern. Out here is where pec, te pec tears happen and shoulder joint issues. Let's go. Okay. Nice. Come on. Drive. Yes. Let's go.
slow on the way down. Oh, motherfucker. 14 and a half. So today, we're basically adding extra volume onto the pressing, which is the movements that create most fatigue. We'll see how you get on from that. And then, based on the next session, we'll see what you can handle more and more. So I don't want to hammer you straight away with loads of extra volume. I want to do what I've done post-show. You've not had a chance to do that because you were sick. So now we're going to go through a process what I've gone through. So I've got where I am now, yeah? But I think with you, session by session, we'll be able to just basically go chip, 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 chip. We're probably about a week and a half from here. So by the time you get around to this rotation again, you're probably going full blast. Because when we get with added extra food today, and you're feeling back to yourself, sleep's better, and you already look so much fucking fuller as well. So, so this was just me explaining how we escalate volume up from minimum effective volume to maximum effective volume and that's the way I approach it. We don't go from zero to 100. Uh, post show, we incrementally go up in line with recovery capacity increasing. And again, credit to Jordan. That's something me and Jordan discussed. And uh, it's definitely paid off. So, very, very happy. Atlantis bench. New bear grips, the handles. If you want yours, jump on the site, using the code, Kuba10. more so your thoracic extension. I don't want you bending here. That's it. Wrap your shoulder blades back around that fucking, yeah. That's what I've got it there, so you can really wrap around it. But once you're wrapped around it, don't try and force your arm past the point where it wants to go. So your range of motion is determined by literally getting here. That's as far as I can go. There's no, you've got no business taking it further, but you need to keep this posture here rather than here in order to get your pecs to actually do the work. Otherwise, if you're protracted, your pecs aren't lengthening, you're shorting your range of motion. Write that down. Massive chest 101. Maybe it was called Park Town. <laughs> Got it wrong.
through. Nice. Chip it together. Yep. Beautiful. It's all right. What about this? Posture first. Posture first, and then we go. Sternum lifted, shoulders back and down, pack back and down. Right. Arm path in line with your pecs. There. Okay. Yeah? yeah. You see that? You feel that already? Yeah, there we go. Posture. Arm path. Then we begin. Now, if you don't feel your pecs engaged as you get into the movement, address your posture and address your setup. You need to feel them working pretty much before you engage. Drive. Strong as fuck, come on. And again, drive, drive, drive. Beautiful. Drive. Through, come on. Yeah. Nice. Slowing your eccentric. Yeah? yeah. All the way through. interesting last rep.
great session and both feeling really, really good and both actually taking a lot of progression. So me and I are going to pose now. You're not going to get to see it, sorry. For now, subscribe, like, share, do all the good stuff. And next session, you actually get to see Meg's pull session in detail and she's going to talk you through it as well. So look out for more content coming your way. Again, support me and Meg and we're both very excited to show you the remainder of the journey. And uh, yeah, we're going to Vegas this year and you are going to get to see it as well. So loads more content coming your way, guys. For now, take care. Peace out. Share the love. Bye-bye.